So far in our reinforcement learning journey, we focus mostly on games with simple, discrete, mutually exclusive actions like buttons on a controller. But if you've ever tried to play a racing game with the keyboard, you know it's hard to steer smoothly. How do we handle tasks which require continuous action spaces? We briefly touched on this in the augmented random search tutorial. We used a single layer perceptron and added random noise to inputs and outputs and then scaled it by whether it improved or worsened the rewards we received. This gave stellar performance on fairly simple robotics tasks, but single layer perceptron has limited intelligence. Deep learning is a must for more advanced tasks like steering a self-driving car based on pixel input from a camera. Actor Critic remains to this day the state of the art architecture for the vast majority of reinforcement learning tasks. So how do we get it to work with continuous actions? Thankfully the answer is very simple, but it's really hard to find tutorials which explain it well, so I'm going to fix that. Let's review how we are currently generating and selecting discrete actions. The policy network generates logits which pass through a softmax function to give us probabilities between 0 and 1 which all add up to 1. This is then used as a probability distribution to pick a random action guaranteeing exploration. And the more certain the network becomes about the correct action, the more we exploit and the less we explore. Continuous action tasks, rather than discrete probabilities, take floating point inputs in a certain range, say negative 1 to 1. In this case, in order to facilitate exploration, we're going to sample values from a normal probability distribution. In this case, our policy network will have two output heads instead of one, mu and sigma. Mu is simply the mean of the probability distribution. The values we sample are going to be centered around the mean, and sigma is a standard deviation. This is how far from the center on average the values we sample are going to be. As the network gets more and more certain about the optimum value to output, sigma gets smaller and smaller, which means we're exploiting instead of exploring. With discrete actions, our loss function was based on log probability. And we're still going to use log probability loss, but the log probability of a normal distribution has a slightly different equation. This is derived from the probability density function, but I'm not going to go into details. Just plug this equation into your code and it works. Entropy of a normal distribution also has a slightly different equation, which we use in our entropy bonus. So in summary, to make your actor critic work with continuous actions, there's really only three things you need to change. One, you're going to modify your policy head to output mu, the mean, and sigma, the standard deviation of each continuous action. Two, modify the loss function to the negative log probability of the normal distribution. Three, modify the entropy bonus to the entropy of a normal distribution. And that's all there is to it. We use stochastic gradient descent just as before on the modified loss function. Let's look at the code. First, let's look at the new neural network model. You can see instead of having a single policy head, we have mu, which outputs the mean and variance, sigma, or the standard deviation squared. First, we have a base layer, which takes the input, which are sensors from the robot, and maps them to the hidden layer. The three output heads then stem from this hidden layer. You'll also notice different activation functions. The discrete policy network used a ReLU function, which cuts off all negative numbers and turns them into zeros. For mu, the mean value of the controls we're going to send to the robot's motors, we're using a hyperbolic tangent, or tanh function, which squishes the output between negative 1 and 1. This is appropriate because the motors accept positive and negative input corresponding to reverse motion and forward motion, with zero being stop. Now let's look at the variance head. Variance is always going to be positive. In this case, we use a soft plus function, which is a smooth ReLU function, which allows a slight amount of negative values to get transformed into positive values. The value head works exactly the same as before. Let's look at how we sample actions in the continuous space and handle the explore exploit dilemma. The agent outputs mu and variance. We simply take a random sample from the normal distribution and clip the values between negative 1 and 1. Here you're seeing how to do it manually, but PyTorch has a normal distribution which will do it automatically in future tutorials. Let's take a look at how we calculate the loss. Again, 
we're using log probability, but from a normal distribution instead of discrete distribution. I won't go over the details because this is the exact equation we saw earlier written in Python code. I'm showing you how to do this manually, but the PyTorch distributions.normal class has a helper function as well. Just as before, we multiply the negative log probabilities by the calculated advantages and take the mean across the batch. Value loss is mean squared error exactly as before. For the entropy bonus, we're using the formula for the entropy of a normal distribution. We add all the losses together and backpropagate just as before. I wanted to put together this tutorial to specifically show you the difference between continuous and discrete action spaces before we move on to more advanced topics. I've left some code for you to play with. There's a link below. This is Colin Scow, and I'll see you in the next tutorial where we're going to learn the final techniques to getting cutting edge reinforcement results using proximal policy optimization. Until then, happy coding.